All right, welcome to my backyard. Got a kid's chair there and some shoes and socks and otherwise beautiful. Coming right into boat. Yeah, it's gonna be that kind of practice. But not really, there's some stuff we're gonna hit kind of hard, but mostly we're gonna be hanging out in the hips in some different incarnations. Right now, boat pose. So it's making my abdomen shake. I don't know if you can see it. Some days are just like that. Some days I'm really strong and some days I'm not. It's all right. Trying to keep breathing. Each of these little segments is 45 seconds. I'm using my timer today. And so you can start to measure your breath by those increments. It's maybe gonna be around eight, six to 10 kind of long breaths. Yeah, and then come into a bridge. Feet on the ground, back of your head on the ground, shoulders on the ground. Bridge is so good. And bridge is so good right after a boat. I'm coming up on my toes here, it's not necessary. I like I like coming up on my toes sometimes in bridge, it gets you into the calf a little bit and it it kind of emphasizes that abdominal stretch that's going on. Of course we're doing a heart opener, rolling the shoulder blades back and down the back. And then take your hips down and put your right foot on your left knee and thread your hands through for figure four. Now listen, depending on your level of flexibility, you may or may not be able to actually thread your hands through. Most of the people who are gonna be doing this level of yoga can do it, but a lot of people I know who are athletes have trouble with this kind of thing just because they're so muscular. You don't have to thread your hands through. You can just hold on to like whatever you can hold on to there. You understand what we're doing. We're getting into that hip, the right hip. So hold your body accordingly. Yep, and then put your right foot on the ground. Keep that shape in your legs and lift up your hips. This is gonna be a one-legged bridge. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about one-legged bridge. And the first thing that I want you to know is that you don't have to hold it for the whole 45 seconds. If it starts to feel bad, put your hips back on the ground. You're still doing a good, good stretch, okay? That said, if you wanna do this thing, it's really about balance. You gotta be careful. You're finding the balance between that one foot and your shoulders and the back of your head. If you get it wrong, you can carry something a little weird on one of your joints, like maybe specifically your knee, and throw something out or like rip your hamstring or do something dumb like that. I've done that before. Be careful of this pose. It's not a very stable balance. If you're not feeling great, just come down. I'll come down anyway. Take your hips down and keep that shape in your legs and make the whole shape go to your left until your right foot is standing and your right knee points towards the sky. I assume you're doing this outside, right? pretty good to do it outside it's pretty nice to do it outside but here's what I want to say about that I really enjoy doing yoga outside the ground is totally uncooperative it's bumpy it makes you fall over it's like kind of gross and damp and weird it's got ants but it's um super good do it if you can that said, if you can't, the, the more important thing than practicing outside is to practice someplace where you can have privacy if you can be by yourself, that makes all the difference. All right, come onto your forearms behind you. Keep that shape in your legs. And we're doing a little heart opener while we're keeping that same hip stretch. Right now, you can probably guess where I'm going with this whole practice, right? We're doing various versions of this same hip stretch. So at any point, if your knee is not loving this, you're going to adjust. Make sure you're in the hip and not the knee because we're going to keep this shape for a little while. I'm opening my heart here, rolling the shoulder blades back and down the back. Oh, look what I'm doing. I'm coming up on my straight arms. Now, this is the actual pose. I sort of forgot that before and when I was down on my forearms. I like it better up on straight arms, but you can stay down on your forearms if you want to. And now I'm coming up to an upward tabletop 
with this one foot still in that same place. This is a hard pose. If you thought the one-legged bridge was fun, you're probably going to really like this one. And likewise, if you think it's not fun, just take your hips down. You're still doing the hip stretch. Balancing and breathing and staying even. Take your hips down, keep that shape in your legs, straightening your left leg, and you're putting your right foot on top of the thigh. This is Janus Rasasana, I just have my foot on my thigh instead of next to it. And um, as you see from the way my knee is kind of coming up at an angle there, it's increasing the hip stretch a lot. And also making it kind of harder for me to come down over that hamstring. So look what I'm doing here. I'm just like finding some place where I can lean where it's not coming into the joint, it's just coming into the muscle, and where I can wait for the muscles to let go. Yep, keep that shape in your legs, and I'm turning to show you what I'm doing here. Bring the straight one underneath the bent one, and now we are in a double pigeon pose aka a fire log, you got a foot on a knee and a knee on a foot. If this pose doesn't work for you, do cross-legged instead. This is a giant hip stretch. It's really good, but it's really intense, particularly early in the practice, so be careful with your body. Yeah. All right, untangle yourself from that. And come to a cross-legged, and we're just going to go back and forth and get into the side body a little bit here. Actually, no, we're just going to this one side. Uh, I don't know what side that is for you. Mirror me, get into your, oh man. You can see from this pose that this is just tracing those lymph nodes down your arm, across your armpit, down into the side body. This is so healthy, particularly for women doing a big cleanse here. Angle your body so that it's the stretch that you need. Good, and then come forward, cross-legged forward bend. I mean, the difference between this and the double pigeon is that I can come down quite a bit further because it's not quite as intense. But they're clearly related poses. And then let's do the other side. So good. mind you, and you know this already, but this lockdown pretty soon is going to start to be a mental health issue for people. So in your yoga, you don't have to be intense. You don't have to achieve anything, but you do need to show up. Keep on showing up. That's going to keep you mentally healthy. All right, come into an upward tabletop. You got weight, weight on your feet, weight on your hands, opening your heart and your shoulders lifting your hips towards the sky. It's a tough pose. You can keep your head up or put it back, whatever you're into. I think I experimented with both and decided I liked it up better. It's up to you.
Good, take your hips down. Oh, no, wait. Oh, I'm so mean. Straighten your legs. We went right from an upward table to an upward plank. The upward plank is the same pose as upward table, except you straightened your legs. And now you're having this, this pose is intense. You're taking your toes down to the ground. Your calves are getting a workout. Your psoas is getting a giant stretch and you're like, will it ever end? Which it can any time. I want to remind you that you're at your house and nobody's watching you. And so come down whenever you want. Good, hips come down. Oh, would it be fun to do another boat right now? Why am I so mean? I'm not sure. Boat. Something I say to my students a lot is that there's, there are two ways to get injured in yoga. And one is the classic, like hurting yourself, pulling a muscle or doing something weird to one of your joints or something. And the second way is to hurt your emotional body by getting frustrated or mad at yourself. That's real. That's a real thing. And um, don't, okay? Don't. That's not what we're about. You won't improve if you hurt your feelings. Just be good to yourself. All right. Come down um, into a bridge. Got your back of your head on the ground, shoulders on the ground, your feet are on the ground. Lift them on up. Bridge pose. The more yoga I do, the more I realize that gentleness is the only way into this thing. And much more interesting than that, gentleness is how you build strength. It doesn't seem like it should be that way. That's very un-American. But it's true. If you're nice to yourself, you'll get stronger faster than if you try and push through some stuff and are mean to yourself promise that's the truth. All right, take your hips down and put your left foot on your right knee. We're going to do that sequence on the other side. Here's figure four. Okay, put your right foot on the ground, keep that shape in your legs, and we're going to lift up to the upward bridge if you want to. And you're like, how am I going to build strength if I'm nice to myself? Because I don't ever feel inclined to do like a one-legged bridge. And the answer is that you come into this pose and you're like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. And then when you're not good, you come down, and then you come back up. That's how. Because... Um, in so doing, you build up your strength, just little by little. That's the best way to do it. And maybe the most sustainable way to do it, too. All right, take your hips down. Take this whole shape to your right until your left knee is pointing towards the sky and your left foot is on the ground. It's just an uh, abdominal twist in your second and third chakras. Feeling the digestive system, breathing there. All right, pick up that same shape. We're gonna keep this same shape for a little while. And now we're in that thing where you can be on your forearms or on your straight arms behind you. I'm experimenting with both a little bit. We're looking for a heart opener and a hip opener at the same time. This pose reminds me of an envelope, especially when your arms are straight. It reminds me like you're making your body into an envelope.
All right, here comes that upward table uh, with the one leg thing. If you're not into the one leg thing, maybe do it with two legs or maybe keep the, keep the hip opener but keep your hips on the ground. In yoga, we build strength because strength gives us different accents points to different parts of the body. It is important that we build it, but um, our main project is to get your emotional body in order. And so don't sacrifice your good mood in order to achieve some kind of pose. It's the opposite of what we're trying to do. All right, when you come down, you're straightening your right leg and you're putting your left foot on top of it coming into this if, if you're not comfortable there like if it's coming into your knee in a weird way then just come to regular John Sasana, putting the left foot to the inside of the thigh instead of on it coming down at whatever angle is appropriate for you I'm trying to wake up my shoulders there a little bit I tend to get a little round in the shoulder area maybe you notice that we all have our stuff Yeah. Okay, and then we're gonna come into the double pigeon on this side. You got a knee on a foot and a foot on a knee. This pose makes my eyes roll back in my head in a good way. Look for the place where it makes your eyes roll back into your head in a good way. I hope you notice also that in all of these yin-like poses that we do where we're holding for a little bit, I wiggle a lot. I think there's a, there's a kind of like a mythology in yoga that you're supposed to hold still, like arrive somewhere and then hold still. I don't think so. I think you're supposed to arrive somewhere and then keep moving until it feels right. All right, let's inhale to a cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. You keep doing this, I'm tucking my shirt in. You keep doing cat cows. Yeah, and then here we go to Downward Dog. Love some Auto Mukha Svanasana. I love it, I love it, I love it. So I'm wiggling here because this is going to be like the best access point into the back of your legs that you've had all day. Look around in the back of your legs. Those of you really flexible people are going to start to move from stretching your legs into stretching your back in this pose i'm kind of sort of getting close to that but not really i got a long way to go still on my hamstrings and it's all right you know like that pose that runners do when you see them in the park and they're like leaning on a tree and stretching the backs of their legs oh never mind pick up your right leg downward dog splits and let it fall behind you i'm making some circles in the air just getting into that hip I like a downward dog splits. And then, oh, what am I doing? I'm putting that foot behind me, rolling my heart open, keeping that, the leg I pivoted on is straight. And here's Rockstar, or AKA Wild Thing. Two dumb names for a pretty cool pose. It's a balance, and the, the pose that it is most closely resembles is side plank. So if you feel uncomfortable here, if it's not feeling right, find your way back into your side plank and renegotiate it from there. All right, come back to downward dog splits. Take that right leg in the air, and then we're gonna go right to the other side. Take your left leg in the air, wiggle into it to the degree that you want to, and then set it down, coming into wild thing. Now, on the one hand, this, this pose is tons easier than it looks. It looks very daunting if you've never done it before. But on the other hand, once you get here, in my opinion, it takes some negotiating to really feel it well. 
I'm still, I'm still in a learning curve on this pose. It's um, a beautiful expression of side plank. It's a heart opener, but it's also kind of easy to lose your balance here and not, and maybe have too much going on on that wrist. Make sure you're protecting yourself. All right, the right leg comes back up. Downward dog splits. Put it through. Oh, guess what? We're gonna do a lot of pigeony kind of stuff. Come first to your high pigeon. We're gonna do 45 seconds on high pigeon. This is where we're standing on our adductors like this. You got your legs in your pigeon pose and you're hanging out. It's a back bend. It, in my opinion, it very closely resembles high lunge. We just have our legs in a different position. You can grab your foot behind you if you want to, rolling over the kneecap, not on it. And that's gonna be a really nice quad stretch, in my opinion, one of the nicest quad stretches in yoga is that thing right there. Opening your heart. Good. And then come down to low pigeon. You know this one. But in case you don't, I wanna warn you, as I always do, don't feel anything in your knee. Make sure your legs are arranged underneath you in such a way that you are just stretching into the hip and feel nothing, nothing, nothing in your knee. Maybe flex your foot underneath you just to make sure that's the case. and then bring that leg from behind you where it was at six o'clock to it's either going to be two o'clock or ten o'clock i think two o'clock you're coming into parvita janosar sasana and i just turned to face you you don't have to turn we're coming down over that leg that's not straight out in front of us and not straight behind us but out to the side either at ten or two o'clock finding this twisting forward bend We're going to do it two ways, so stick with me here. The, this one is um, the digestive version. We are twisting deep into the second and third chakra and then laying our body down over our thigh. In my, <coughs> my opinion, it's a digestive pose. And then we're going to twist it, taking that elbow to the inside of the knee, opening the heart. Remember when we did that long side bend in the beginning? This is very similar. We just changed the position of our legs. Yeah. Oh, and then take that same leg straight out in front of you to 12 o'clock for Janusha Sasana. Hooray. So this is the pose that we did before when we had the foot on our thigh, and now we've got our foot tucked into the thigh. It's, um, we were doing sort of a more extreme version of it before. Now we're doing the friendly version. Okay, and then take that same leg and put it, um, put your foot on your knee and your knee on your foot. Could it be that we're coming into the double pigeon again? Yeah. If you don't like double pigeon, do cross legged like instead. Gonna do double pigeon pose four times in one class. This is um, gonna change your head. Certainly it's gonna change your hips. And then come up and then swish your legs back and forth, releasing your hips. Yeah, looks like we're gonna do some cat cows. Inhale to a cow lift. 
Exhale, cat tuck. Do that a few times. Come up onto your knees, lace your hands together behind you and really open your heart towards the sky. That's the pose right there, so good. If you feel like coming down further, you can, but you don't have to, all right? I'm on my toes. And I put my hands on my heels and I, I'm opening that so as. I'm not crunching the lumbar spine, we're trying to feel like there's length being created in the lumbar spine here. One time before the world all shut down, I went to a Bikram class. And they do this pose in Bikram. And they, one of the, the teacher came over and was like, Cinnamon, I think you could put your feet flat on the ground instead of like up on my heels like this. I'm just showing off. That was like a great epic moment for me in my yoga trajectory. Come to, uh, uh, what's this thing, dolphin plank. You're on your forearms. And we're planking, and what we're doing in our plank is just fixing up that giant back bend. You did a giant back bend, and now you are in the plank. Anyway, so this Bikram person said this to me, and I was so flattered, like out of my mind. But I didn't do it. I could have gone deeper into the pose, but I didn't, because I like that pose the way it is. I'll know when I'm ready. And dolphin plank, you know, if you've had enough, you can put your hips on the ground, it doesn't matter. All right, and then what are we doing? Coming on to our, oh yeah. All right, we're gonna do some more side bending. All right, so you're on one knee, mirror me here. Mirror me here, and then come to the side. I really love this pose, gate pose, parigasana. We're doing a side bend. We've done this same side bend now. Uh, Four. This is our fourth time. We're going to do a couple more too. So, big release for your lymph nodes and for your shoulder. And make sure that that knee that's underneath you is not uncomfortable. I always say that in this pose. It's really easy to kind of grit your teeth through a pose, but you don't want to do that. Make sure you're comfortable. Come to the other side. And the way to get comfortable is to be honest. It's really that simple. If you're like, actually, I am not that comfortable, then your body will tell you what to do. You can put your hands on the ground and like move your knee or move your foot. Try to find a different angle to hold it at. You'll know. And that is what makes working with a video like you are doing actually really great. Because if you're a self-conscious person like me, you might be too embarrassed to adjust mid-pose. But if there's no one watching you, why not? All right, downward dog. Go ahead and wiggle. That's what it's for. We're just going to go right into the pigeon on the other side. Yeah, it's a high pigeon. Looks like I've got my right leg underneath me. Hopefully this is the other side. Make sure you're on the other side. Yeah, it's the other side. Um, there's this apocryphal tale about Asheville Yoga. This, that's a big studio in our area. Supposedly in Asheville Yoga, they say that in a high pigeon you're supposed to have enough space for our groundhog to crawl between your legs whereas in a low pigeon you're supposed to have enough space for a mouse to crawl between your legs 
Isn't that bonkers? Somebody told me that a long time ago and it has never left me. All right, come down to your mouse-sized pigeon. I, it's, it's such an insane thing to say, but it's very evocative. Kind of gets the point across. Okay, and then take that leg from behind you to the whatever o'clock this is. I'm thinking 10 o'clock. For me, it's 10 o'clock. Make sure it's the opposite, either 10 or 2, than you did before coming into your uh, really beautiful digestive forward bend. Um, I forgot to turn and face the camera, but you know what I'm doing, right? I got my right foot tucked into my left thigh. My left leg is out to the side, and I'm laying my body down over it. And then put your left elbow inside your left knee and bring your right arm up. And here's that twist again. I mean, that side bend again. And here I'm remembering that I need to face the camera. There it is. Oh, that's real good. And then take that leg forward and come down over it. Chana Susasana. I ran into my friend Debbie at Ingalls this morning and she was like, I'm watching your videos. Ingalls is our grocery store. The one place we're allowed to go. And it just made my day. I love thinking about people practicing with me. That makes me feel really less isolated. Good, bring your leg up. And I think, if I remember, yes, we're gonna do a double pigeon on this side. So it's the leg that has been straight the whole time that's bending on top and you're coming down into it to the extent that you want. I wish there was another yoga teacher here with me in this shot that you could see how other yoga teachers express this thing. Most of them just paint their body down and have their forehead on the ground. As you see, I'm nowhere close to that. It's really okay to be as flexible as you are. And it's okay to be as strong as you are because it all comes in time. And the cool thing is that as we're getting from here to there, we get to practice. And that's the fun part. All right, come out of that Uva Vista Konasana. And what we're going to do here is stay here for a long time.
The pose will change at certain points and your work is to be present enough that you notice the changes. If they're good changes, you go deeper. If they're bad changes, you dial back. In this video, you maybe, I don't know if you're going to see, but from where I'm watching it, it looks like there's a blue streak going diagonally across the screen. That's a sunbeam. I don't know why it came out blue. Alright, come up out of that and swish out your hips a little bit. Come up to a bridge, tuck in your shirt, you may not need to do that. I'm going to do a wheel, you can stay in bridge if you want. I really do like wheel pose and that's the one and only reason why I do it all the time. It took me a long time to like it, I had to build it up like three seconds at a time, but now I like it. If it feels stressful on your back, don't do it. But if it just is um, kind of scary, you might want to try it at three second intervals until it doesn't feel scary anymore. That bridge is just as good. All right, come down. And it's time for Shavasana, yeah. Do any last thing you need to do. And then just let your body kind of be on the ground.
All right. Wiggle whatever and roll onto your side. I want to stay on my side for 45 seconds. I have noticed that I have been rushing out of Sravasana lately. Why? For what? Stay here and uh, honor your heart. And then come on up. Take your hands to your forehead and breathe into your sinuses. Honoring every cell in your body. Take your hands to your heart. Breathe into your lungs. I dedicate my practice to you, the work that you're doing right now in your house, the work of being yourself is really important. We really need it. And thank you for doing it. Namaste.